I have in my hands the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the baseline version with the regular M3 chip inside with eight gigabytes of memory and 512 gigs of storage for $1599. So let's just go ahead and go over a general overview of this device. We'll go through the setup process and set it up as a new computer. We'll run a benchmark or two and talk about one issue that I'm already having. So here we are. We have the brand new M3 baseline MacBook Pro. This is the M3 model that starts at $1,599, which it's a bit expensive and maybe we'll get to that later. But this comes with the eight core CPU with a 10 core GPU, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage and just eight gigabytes of memory. Yes, just eight. And on the outside, you'll see that there's really not much new to look at. We've seen this design since the 2021 MacBook Pros. And honestly, there's really nothing I would change about it or nothing that I can think of to change about it because it still just looks absolutely amazing. It is the right size for a pro laptop. Nothing to complain about. And it is space gray, which I've basically only been using silver for the last couple of years. So this is a difference. And of course there is the space black version with the M3 Pro chip and the M3 Max chip, which I will also be getting. So definitely hit subscribe if you wanna see that video. But space gray compared to silver, I mean, it's space gray. We've seen this or a slight variation of this for a decade plus now. So let's open this beautiful new computer up, take off the screen protector, and it's going to load up. And we're just gonna go ahead and walk through the configuration and setup process as a new device. So we're just gonna go through the setup process real quick and set it up as a new computer. And as you can see, it has the same beautiful 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display that you get on the higher end MacBook Pro models. And it is an awesome display. It's got that adaptive refresh rate. It now gets up to 600 nits of brightness in regular SDR work. It gets up to 1600 nits of brightness with HDR content. And this display is just stunning. It is the best display that Apple makes. And so we'll just go ahead and start the setup process. Select our language. Now it wants us to select our region. I'm in the United States. Continue. Accessibility options is letting you know that there's options for vision and motor skills and hearing and cognitive issues. We'll just say not now for me. And now we can select our Wi-Fi network. I'll go ahead and connect to that. Here's some basic information about data and privacy from Apple. We'll hit continue. And now we get to Migration Assistant. And this is where you can go through the process of migrating all of your data and your information from one Mac to this Mac. Now, I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I did a previous video recently that showed the entire process of migrating everything from one Mac to another. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave that in the link below. But in this video, we're just going to go ahead and set it up like it's a new computer, but we are going to log into our Apple ID. So anything that we have stored in Apple is going to come over. So your contacts, iMessage, files in iCloud storage, that kind of stuff will be available. So for now, we're just gonna hit not now at the bottom left and then sign into my Apple ID. It's asking me to agree to terms and conditions for our Apple ID. We'll hit agree. So now it's asking for me to create a user account for this local computer. I'm going to create an account name with Jerry and then I'll type a password. All right, so now the iCloud setup process is going to take just a couple of minutes. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is take a look at what came inside, inside of the box with the MacBook. And you're probably pretty familiar with what comes inside here. First off, we get that MagSafe cable right here and it is color matched. So this one is space gray. We have this little booklet designed by Apple in California. We get a little startup book and we get two nice little stickers. They're black, so you know that they are pro stickers and you bought the pro MacBook. And underneath here, the last thing we have is this 65 watt charger. Yes, this is a 65 watt charger which cannot even fast charge your new $1,600 MacBook Pro. And look at the size of this thing. This is huge for one tiny little port you get this big power adapter. Now, wouldn't you actually prefer something that can actually fast charge your new MacBook Pro and all of your other devices? This is the Nexo 300 watt GAN charger from channel partner Ugreen. And this is Ugreen's first 300 watt multi-port GAN charger. And this thing is a beast. This is the biggest charger I've ever seen and it's packed full of features. This is a five port charger that can power just about anything you need it to at up to 140 watts for a single device. For example, this can fast charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro to 56% in just 30 minutes using the top USB-C port on the Nexode and the Apple MagSafe cable. And with Power Delivery 3.1, you can fast charge just about anything from laptops to tablets and other phones or 
anything else that can charge with USB. The Nexo 300 watt charger can charge all of your devices with two GANFAST 3 chips inside, but also keep you safe with built-in smart thermal guard system that keeps connected devices protected from overheating, overcharging, and excessive current. So if you need to power your team or even your family, you can get one of these Nexo 300 watt chargers today using the links and codes in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. So the iCloud setup has completed and now it's asking me about setting up location services, device analytics, app analytics, and Siri. And you can just go ahead and hit continue or you can customize those settings and I'll go ahead and customize them. I do want location services on. I do share my analytics with Apple. I'm okay with that, even crash reports because if it helps other Mac users in the future and Apple developers, then great. Screen time, I disable because I don't generally use it and I don't like to use Siri on my laptop because I have other devices with Siri. Here you can go ahead and set up file vault disk encryption, which I definitely recommend that you keep on. It's checked by default. This encrypts all of the files and information on your laptop so somebody can't just boot this up in safe mode and actually be able to read your data without needing your password. And now we set up Touch ID at the top right. We'll go ahead and tap it. And if you've used Touch ID on iPhones or iPads or anything else in the past, it is basically the same process. You move your finger up and down a number of times so it can read it. And then you move around the edges of your finger so that however you place your finger on the Touch ID sensor, it's going to be able to verify that it's your finger and quickly get you to your desktop. Apple Pay, I'll go ahead and set up later. And I prefer light mode. I'm not a big dark mode fan. So we'll stick with that and hit continue. And I think that's about it. Great, there we are. We are to the desktop and this does not look like macOS Sonoma. This MacBook shipped with Ventura 13.5. So I've seen some reports about some of these MacBooks shipping with Ventura and being unable to actually upgrade to Sonoma. So this might actually be a problem. I might not be able to actually update this computer. So we'll go ahead and go to system preferences to see if there's even an option to upgrade this from Ventura to Sonoma because I might actually have a problem here. And checking for updates and looks like I have an update for Safari. I don't even have an update for Sonoma here. Holy crap, what do I do? All right, so that's slightly concerning and I'll have to figure out what to do about that in the meantime, see if we can update it manually, downloading from Apple developer site. But in the meantime, we'll just go ahead and check out the ports and run a quick benchmark to check out this base model M3 MacBook Pro. So looking at the ports on the left-hand side, we do have that MagSafe connection right here, which allows you to fast charge as long as you have a charger larger than what it actually comes with. You get two Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4 ports here, and you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the left-hand side, right-hand side, you do have an HDMI port and the SD card slot, which is awesome. I use it all the time, but you don't have that third Thunderbolt port over here. And that means that clearly Apple is purposely trying to differentiate the product line with the base M3 chips, only being able to support one external display. Love it or hate it, it is what it is right now. If you need additional displays, you're going to have to pony up for the Pro or the Max chip or go with a third party solution like a dock that has display link built in and that will allow you to basically virtualize additional displays for your MacBook, even if you have the base model M3 chip. All right, so let's just go ahead and run a couple quick benchmarks just to get an idea of the performance of this machine. We'll start with a disk test because one of the issues with base model MacBooks in recent past has been that the disk has been pretty slow on the base models with just one NAND chip versus two. So let's just go ahead and do a quick check right here and we'll go ahead and hit start. And there you have it. We are actually getting decent speeds on this baseline MacBook Pro. We're getting about 3,300 megabytes per second read and write, which is fantastic compared to the previous models with 256 gigabytes that we're getting around 1,600 megabytes per second. And looking at the Geekbench results of the baseline M3 MacBook Pro, I'm getting a single core score of 3,075 and a multi-core score of 11,889. Now, unsurprisingly, you're going to see a pretty big single core performance boost over the M1 and the M2 versions, but the multi-core score of 11,889 is just barely behind my 10-core CPU on my M2 Pro, which gets a score of 12,149. And with Geekbench Metal Performance, the 10-core GPU in the M3 is about 24% faster than the 8-core GPU in the baseline M2. So the performance increases of the M3 line do look like they are pretty significant. Other than that, this 14-inch MacBook Pro should be basically the same as the other versions, the same speakers, the same camera, the same microphones, the same trackpad, the same everything. So 
There's not a lot else to cover at this time. Now, obviously I'm going to have to figure out how to get Sonoma onto this machine today. So that'll be interesting. But if you're interested in seeing that video that I mentioned before about how to fully migrate your information from one Mac to another, check out this video right over here. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this base model M3 MacBook Pro. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.